Hi, I'm Sean Gann, and this is Minute Math, and today we're learning about how to rationalize denominators. And this is a topic that really tricks students up a lot. Minute Math, Minute Math, when you need help you use Minute Math. A few things to note. If I have, let's say, 1 over b square root of c, okay, to me, eliminate the square root in the denominator, or as they say, rationalize the denominator, I would have to multiply this by the square root of c over c, okay? And what that does is, and we'll see some examples, so I don't want to get it bogged down with the variables here, but we know that square root of c over square root of c is essentially 1, right? What is 1? And so multiplying an expression by 1 doesn't really do anything. So all, this is legal for us, but it allows us to manipulate this to get the square root out of the denominator here. Because square root of c times square root of c is just c, and now we no longer have a square root in the denominator. The same thing happens when we have, let's say this, 1 over a plus b square root of c. Notice here for the second one, that I can't just multiply this by square root of c over square root of c. If I did so, yes, this one would be eliminated, but then we would add a square root of c to the a, and we still have a square root in the denominator. Doesn't help us. But what we do is called the conjugate. We multiply uh, the conjugate um, over itself to our expression. And so this conjugate is just a minus b square root of c and we have a minus b square root of c. And make sure you don't, uh, or make sure you multiply the numerator and the denominator, like, because remember this whole thing is equal to one. And hopefully we can see this, but when we multiply this out, a times a is just gonna be a squared, great, doesn't really matter, we just wanna make sure we don't have a square root in the denominator. And then b squ uh, square root of c times b square root of c, they multiply, square root of c's will cancel. But here's where the beauty happens. If we take a and multiply it by negative b squared of c and b squared of c times positive a, we'll have the same exact thing but a positive and negative and they eliminate. And that's why this becomes helpful, okay? That little part here we'll have was what? Uh, a negative a b squared root of c plus a positive a b squared root of c and they cancel. So that's really where this whole thing becomes useful. And we can see that with some of our examples here. So let's go dive in. Let's do a couple examples. We wanna write this in simplest form. Two square root of three over three square root of 10. Now again here, I don't like having square roots in the denominator. Now, first thing, I try to see if there's a way to like, anything that just cancels out and nothing really. So what I'm gonna to try to do is get that square root out of the denominator. To do so, we'll kind of apply the first part here. Square root of 10 over 10. Again, this one doesn't really change, doesn't change the value of this expression, but it allows us to manipulate. Well, multiply across the numerator here. We'll just show our steps here in a little bit. So two, or remember our rules for multiplication, we multiply it across the whole numerator, two times, and the square roots, we can, we can multiply the numbers on the inside. We learned that earlier. So three times 10 is 30. Square root of 30. The denominator, well, square root of 10 times square root of 10 is just 10, and so three times 10 is 30. So now we have to simplify this a little more. Two and 30 simplify, well, to be one over 15. So 15 is in the denominator. Don't need to write the one. We have the square root of 30, and square root of 30 doesn't really simplify anymore. It's just 3 times 10, 10 is 2 times 5, nothing pairs up. So we just have square root of 30 over 15 as our final answer. That's this expression in simplest form. So let's try another one here, number 9. Okay, and this one's going to apply the second part of our rule here. Well, we have 4 over 1 plus square root of 5, and we have to write this in simplest form, okay? Well, we're going to apply our conjugate here, and we're going to multiply this expression by our conjugate. We have 
which is 1 minus square root of 5 over 1 minus square root of 5 here. Okay. So now we want to multiply this out. Okay. So this becomes a little tricky. Let's deal with the numerator first. Okay. 4 times the 1, make sure we distribute. 4 times 1 is 4. And 4 times the minus square root of 5 is this minus 4 square root of 5. Not too bad. Let's try the denominator. All right, remember all parts of the first expression multiply by all parts of the second expression in the denominator. 1 times 1 is just 1. And then let's go through it. 1 times a minus square root of 5 is a minus square root of 5. Square root of 5 times 1 is just a square root of 5. And lastly, square root of 5 times a minus square root of 5 is a minus, well, square root of 5 times square root of 5 is 5, so minus 5 here. Okay? Now, luckily for us here, remember, a minus square root of 5 and positive square root of 5 cancel. And as you start getting used to writing this and doing that, you will kind of skip this step and just don't really write that. But for now, it's a good visual. So let's look at our numerator. Let's just kind of rewrite this up as much as possible. We have 4 minus 4 square root of 5. And the denominator, we just have 1 minus 5, which is just a minus 4. Now hopefully you're not just thinking that we're done here. We have 4 and 4s here, and we can simplify this a little more. Okay. Now watch this. I'll do it in two steps to help break it apart. The 4s cancel. Right? 4 goes into here, 4 goes into there. Make sure you go into both parts in the numerator, right? So now we have, well, 4, 4 cancel in a sense. So we have a 1 in the numerator minus 4 and 4. We have a 1 square root of 5 over, well, it's left here as a negative, so a negative 1 here. Hmm, so if I wrote, we'll multiply this by negative 1 over negative 1, right? We're allowed to do that in mathematics. Negative 1 divided by negative 1 is positive 1. We can multiply by 1. It's all fine and legal. And what this does, it gets the negative out of the denominator. Negative 1 kind of really come out. It gets eliminated here, and we just have a positive 1. And we don't need to write that in the denominator anymore. Negative 1 times this 1 out here is a negative 1. And then negative times this negative 1 becomes a positive 1. And we don't need to write the 1, so we have plus square root of 5. And sometimes you'll see it written as such, square root of 5 minus 1, but these are the same thing. And there we have our answer. Square root of 5 minus 1 is this, what we started with, in simplest form. Okay. Now granted, I showed the equal sign to show the steps. You're technically not supposed to, but it's okay. So I hope this video explained how to rationalize denominators, and if it did, please hit the subscribe button down below and like this video and comment. This lets us make more videos to help teach students all over the world. And as always, thanks for watching. Minute math, minute math, when you need help you use minute math.